Hi, my name is Jeff Pagano, and welcome to the Harpen on Rugby Preview Show. And joining me to look ahead to Leinster's next assignment this season is someone on cap number 68. Welcome back to Mr. Neil Kigo Keegan. 68, we're very close, uh, but yes. Uh... We're going to have all sorts of crack next week, man. <laughs> so yes, I was saying to you just before we started, uh, I'm a little bit delicate today after the work Christmas party. So far as we record this on the following day, I'm still fully employed. So fingers crossed that continues and no CCTV footage comes in. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. Okay, listen, before we start, Kigo, we're, of course, beginning our Champions Cup campaign against the same team we finished the last one against. Uh, how are you seeing our chances of getting over that final hurdle to start number five this season? I think the uh, our South African friend coming in is a uh, it's a great signing. It's another showing of um, a lack of ego from the Leinster organization, which is great. They're obviously recognizing something in the last few years. Um, you know, the as much as you know, there's a lot of South Africans at work who were talking to me at the bar, very happy with themselves. Um, they were basically saying that Ireland are a better team overall. They play better rugby as we saw in the group stages. But when it comes to knockout, there's a point in it rugby. All the top teams fancy it against us. Um, so we're playing all sorts of sexy rugby. Uh, but when South Africa, if South Africa found us in the final, they wouldn't have been worried as worried as they were versus New Zealand. Uh, and so we've, I think the Leinster organization have managed that, organized that, seen that, reached out, uh, Neil Barr's come in. And I think he's, his first interview was very interesting. He's not taking over everything. So we've got Andrew Goodman over here. We've got all the guys over here, all that sort of. So like if someone comes to him with a problem with the, the back play or whatever, they go over here. But he's he's kind of got his fingers everywhere. But I think it's between the ears he's going to settle in and make it. It'll be every moment count. So I think they'll be in the league. We still may get these big wins. But as we get into Europe and we play the bigger teams, the knockout rugby, that margin's going to shrink but our performances are going to grow. I think that's what we're going to look at this year. Yeah, I mean, it's a fine line for Leinster. I mean, um, you, you have the expectations every season, no matter um, who what what's gone on the year before. That's that. That's I mean, that's why we say we're going for a fifth star. It's those four stars that are setting that standard. Um, but uh, of course, you got that the the old T word transition, which a lot of people say, which uh, you know often gets used. It's a, it's an excuse for not winning. Do you know what I mean? It's like a pre excuse, and uh, I th I think it's a perfect for him personally. I mean, like when you've won two worlds cups what what do you go to <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean and uh, but he's coming into a club that's that's got high expectations he's expecting to not just win throughout the season and bring on all these players but also to have that success and he could be just the guy to to get us over that final hurdle but uh, we, 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 anyway we'll see we'll see we'll just take it one match at a time i suppose and uh, absolutely i'm sorry the, the main thing is the family's settling in well apparently so that's that's a good sign that's always a good sign, yeah, indeed. Well, let's look at that first match, which is our feature match of the week, and that is uh, La Rochelle v. Leinster in round one of the 23-24 uh, Investec Champions Cup. It's kind of hard to say, moving on from H, uh, the, the H word to the I word. Um, it's taking place at the Stade Marcel de Flandre on Sunday, December the 10th, kicking off at 3.15 p.m. TV coverage in Ireland is on TNT Sports 1. That's the network formerly known as BT Sport. And as ever, you can find the full listings for the weekend on Harp and Rugby Com. Just click the Rugby on TV tab. Now, Leinster named their match day 23 at lunch day on Friday. If you're watching on YouTube, it's right there on the screen. Um, or if you're pod listeners, it's uh, in the program notes. So, uh, Kigo's got a few points he's got from the from the team, starting at our choice of out half. Yeah, uh, and I, actually, last night I found it very difficult to order an Invest Tech at the bar. So, that's how used I was to Heineken. Um, but no, I think we've spoken about it over the last few weeks and even over the years um, on camera and off camera. Um, for all, he's really been coming through and he really did a job when, unfortunately, Ross Byrne went off with the arm injury against Munster. We thought, OK, let's let's put a few minutes in his boots uh, with, with Ross Byrne out. Harry Byrne has, in relative terms between the two of them, quite a bit more experience. So let's let's bring Frawley up so that when you know, when Ross is away, I'm, I'm hoping that Ross is is the owner of the jersey right now when he's fit. But again, it depends on how we want to play going forward. But let's assume he is. Uh, and I, you know, I, I feel he should be. I think Frawley's, the way he took over um, in that Munster game, I think uh, warranted him starting at 10 the following week. Even uh, Munster supporters were agreeing with us there. Alan Quillen was on the radio the following week saying it just doesn't make any sense that, you know, Harry Byrne is coming in after Frawley's uh, performance the week before in a big Interpro game, which Harry Byrne up to this point 
massive talent, but he hasn't quite done that yet. The problem with uh, with Frawley is it appears he covers four positions, and that's great. That means he's always going to get a tracksuit on match day. But you know he is a, 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 at the moment. If you're picking one one player for the ten jersey, I I would suggest he's the guy you pick. Project Harry Byrne is an ongoing project, and they obviously see something that maybe we saw in glimpses. The first run he had, first first 15 minutes he had last week, we were kind of going, okay, Harry's here. He's playing for a jersey. He's ready to rock. And then he kind of was absorbed by the game a wee bit. So, yeah, I, I, I'm i kind of good for Frawley, but I, I kind of, on the other hand, I understand why he's got a tracksuit, but not a starting jersey. Yeah, it's like you say, he's like kind of a victim of his uh, of his own versatility. Um, I suppose I suppose what we have to realize is that you know we're we're in the post Sexton era, and it's we're not, and not not every team we've gotten used to it over the years, but not every team totally relies on the ten jersey for yeah. for for what happens. And I think I think you're absolutely right. I think of all Leinster's options at the moment, I think Frawley is probably the best. He said openly he wants to play that position. That's when he wants to make his own. And um, I, I Ideally, we'd have a situation where we could just build a team around him at 10. But with the player pool we have and we need options and cover in other areas, I suppose this is what it is. And uh, Harry, Harry can definitely do a job. And we we do have a lot in, in other areas, a lot of a lot of experience around him as well to help him through. So uh, we'll just we'll just see what happens there. OK, your next point is about uh, what was what, what was to be a 6-2 bench. Yeah, so this is something um, relatively recent, and I don't know if it's something that's been said on a walkie-talkie from South Africa with a traffic light or whatever. Um, so I don't know if this was an instruction ahead of, ahead of Neenbar coming in, but um, it, it's an interesting way of doing business. It's kind of, uh, and again, it's different to what the what the box do because they obviously they're skillful and all that sort of stuff, but the skill level of all everyone on the bench uh, tomorrow is massive. Um, and so it's, it is slightly different. As I was typing it to you ahead of the show, I was kind of going, yeah, 6-2, I'm not a massive fan of it, but it's not a normal 6-2. It was, it was coming up to us. Yeah. Uh, it was coming up to today. So yeah, I didn't know if that was an instruction coming forward. So when you were looking at the people who were on the bench, uh, and certainly today as well, like they're, they're all ball players coming on. Um, but this, when, they do, when Leinster do a 6-2, it's not the same as a South African 6-2 is what I'm trying to say. So it took me a little while as I was typing it to you, I was starting to realize that. So I don't I don't like the name 62 based on what it was. But I think Nina Barr is kind of saying it's not that anymore mm. because the, everyone can kick. Like you know, we've seen Keen Healy do drop goals from the halfway line. So everyone it, it's a very different bomb squad if you like. Uh but no, I just I I still I'm a bit raw from the mention of 62 from the World Cup. So I hope we don't fall into that on a regular basis. Absolutely. And it, and, and we won't even start on 7-1 uh, <laughs> benches. <laughs> But uh, no, the, the thing about this selection is, is that with Charlie Natai there, it's it's yeah. kind of got the same feel of a 6-2 because um, uh, the, what the whole point of it, if, I, I guess the theory of it is, is that you, your forwards can, can put that extra bit into that first uh, 60 minutes and sort of go all out knowing that they've, 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 They've more, uh, and you know, energetic people to come on and continue that for the rest of the game. And Natai is that kind of player, even though he's a back. And it it gives kind of Robbie Henshaw in particular that kind of freedom to um, just go out there with his carries. And because we know we're going to be getting it in the other direction, there's going to be a lot of strong carries coming at us. We've got to sort of fight fire with fire, I guess. And um, we can keep that going for eighty minutes. But uh, it's uh, I like it. But I I do agree that it's not something you just want to do for the sake of it. Yeah, and um, it's it, there's got to be a thinking behind it, and um, you, you know you can, and I'm glad it's sort of good to see that Leinster, even though we've been we've been picking six two benches going up to now, so it did look like we were preparing for that, for this game. Yeah, but um, I guess I guess they just figured you know maybe with injuries and stuff and the way the way that way it all shook out that uh, they, that they were able to to, to go this way. And a okay. sh- uh, sorry, and a shout out yeah. to Ben Murphy as well. It's going to be mm-hmm. a big day for him. Um, we saw him come on in the Munster game and him and Frawley work quite well together once they settled in. So yeah, big day for him too. Absolutely. And you wonder how the options are going to, because we've, you know, another way, God forbid if there's injuries and stuff, but uh, we do have some options. Gibson Park is known to play in the wing. Gary Ringrose yep. is known to play in the wing. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that can happen there. We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what they go with. Okay. So for your third point, um, well, I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll let you yeah. go on with that. So, so this might be a bit of a soapbox issue um, and a bit of an under caffeinated issue, but I, I love 
commitment to a plan in general, life, sport, all that sort of stuff. And we, there's obviously a commitment to uh, the Byrne Brothers at 10. Okay, and that's that's fine if that's the plan. Um, I just think, and again, at, at the end of, I, I think I put it on Twitter, Twitter or X or whatever it is, like at the end of the day, when something is presented to you on a plate, like Frawley against Munster, I feel that you could use that time to bring him through, get minutes in the boots and bring that experience up in that big jersey that he has said publicly, as you said, he wants that job. So it's it's great that someone wants the job and they're sp- expressing it publicly. Uh, that's a really great thing for a coach to hear. What you could do now is is reverse the reverse the journeys over the last two weeks. So you put you put uh, Harry Byrne in, in the Frawley role, Frawley in the Byrne role. So Byrne gets uh, 12 fullback wing experience, which helps him do the job at 10. And Frawley gets the extra minutes in there at 10. And then, okay, you make your decision going forward. So, you know, the last two weeks, we could have been building up that experience. And then the two of them are are, are fully around the team, fully game time in all positions around the team, which makes the 10 job much easier. I just, I, I, I don't know. So I'm a very stubborn person. I'm hoping Leinster are not being stubborn just like me because bad things happen when you're too stubborn. Yeah, it's. I've never been a fan of the the whole idea of a of a succession plan laid out um, yeah. years in advance. And uh, I mean, you would have thought two years ago we would have flagged uh, Sexton retiring after the after the World Cup. And uh, for, from Leinster's point of view, you would have said, "Well, Ross Byrne is there; he'll be the one to step into the shoes." But I mean, since then we've had other players come along: um, Harry Byrne, Prendergast, Frawley. Frawley's yeah. always been there. He's got an, always got injured at the wrong times. Uh, when he was starting to get a chance to show what he can do, but um, no, you're right. It's uh, you've got to go with the team that you have at the moment, uh, uh, ideally. But um, like you say, well, you know, they they might have a special uh, plan for for Harry on Sunday. So, um, but there's a, there's other um, there's other interesting elements to that team as well. Will Connors coming in uh, yep. to to number seven. Now, I wonder is that a sort of an anti skeleton measure? Um, he's uh, Connors is uh, he's a great uh, seven in his own right, but he's he's known particularly on defence. Uh, I expect him to have like twenty tackles done by the end of the yep. first fifteen minutes, and hopefully all of them on on skeleton. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's a question. So, and of course, but if we know Raj. He'll see that coming, so he'll have an anti Will Connors um, uh, plan in place. So it'll be an interesting tactical battle yeah, there. It's interesting you say that. I think Joe McCarthy is going to be the one who's going to uh, be doing a job or trying to do a job on Skelton. True. Yeah. Uh, I think I think he's he's going to have a massive massive game, and I think Ryan as well. But I think it's going to be Joe McCarthy who's going to be going up against the beasts beasts of their back row, just trying to slow them down. It's like we've said recently, the the Leinster offensive defense is what we need. We can't, we can't absorb all this stuff. Um, it, it like, even with a 17 point lead, we've got to, we can't do that. So we've got to be offensively tackling these people um, because they are monsters as we know. But if we can do what we're doing as in pushing forward on every single tackle, making them get up, turn around, making them work their gas. Like we keep saying the big guys don't have gas, but like last year they showed us they had it. So we have to do something different. Their, their skill level is, is comparative, but I think our, the difference we need to bring is this offensive um tackling that maybe maybe be a bit cheeky maybe slow it down at different points understand when we have to slow it down and then when the options are there we need to go for it we need Keenan to get on that ball and and just frighten them um I, I think we have it in us but that offensive defense that we've been showing needs to really really show up Absolutely, we need a bit of uh, luck on the injury front as well. We could do with we could do with getting seventy or eighty minutes out of out of James Ryan for sure, yep. uh, unlike last May, and uh, and uh, hopefully um, Michael Al- Alatoa as well will have a good start. For, unfortunately, Furlong wasn't able to make make the squad, and uh, so we'll, we'll need a, we'll need a strong showing out of that opening front row. So yep. uh, we'll see what happens there. Well, let's move over to our opposition, which is of course uh, La Rochelle. They put out a pretty strong looking team. Yeah, it's you kind of. <laughs> As much therapy as we've all been through to forget about last year, they would name this team and it all comes flooding back to you. And that's why we buy the jerseys and that's why they're given the jerseys. Um, there's so much in there. Like there, there, there's too much in there. That front, The front row battle is going to be good. It's a big day for Al Alatoa. Um, worrying about Furlong with the injuries over the last kind of year, but that's a separate, separate thing. I think Sheehan, um, I think the hooker battle is going to be brilliant. I think Porter, as as is going to be the, the the game now coming up against Leinster and Ireland, 
he's seen as someone who gives away penalties. Um, now, some of them, whether that's fair or unfair, that's the way it's seen. So the referee's looking at him. Um, so they're going to try and put the squeeze over that side of the scrum. I think Joe McCarthy has a big job. I think he's going to be the guy who's going to go and, and take on that that back row, uh, which will be interesting, kind of opens up Will Connors a wee bit. Um, if, if, if McCarthy is going after... Um, the the fives and sixes, um, it may open a bit of space for Connors, but I think, like, I just I I'm just scrolling through it here. I do, oh god, I can't imagine playing against these people. Like, even you look at the job O'Gar's done on Delan, right? Like Delan, great player, very athletic, very aggressive, all that sort of stuff. And you look at the job that Rogers done with him over in La Rochelle, you kind of go, like, it's going to be eighty plus minutes of absolute warfare, and you kind of go, I don't. You can you can hear how worried I am scrolling up and down this team sheet. Uh, I don't want to talk about it, Jeff. That's pretty much it. I don't Fair want to enough. talk about yeah, it too. No, no, no. I, I don't blame you, man. It's uh, I mean, every everywhere you look, I think I think my I, although it's obviously it's heavy into the forwards and the carrying yep. and the way they bullied us, uh, uh, bullied back from that uh, deficit uh, in May um, is 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 going to be the focus. But I think it's that that center partnership of Dante and Satani, I think is um, now we've got a decent one ourselves, but they yeah. haven't had a lot of rugby together this year. And uh, I mean, let's face it, La Rochelle's results haven't been great uh, so far this season, but they do know how to, 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 to get going for the big occasion. And you, you know, for them, you can't really, I mean, this is so big for them as well. Yeah. I mean, they might've had the better of us the last two seasons, but each time they did know they were in the game and, um, and uh, they, they, they'll be pumped for this. So it's, uh, it's, uh, and like you say, it's good to see Delan on the bench as well. So it's a bit of, bit of Irish representation there, but uh Anyway, listen, it's 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 a lot to look forward to, you know. Oh, it's yeah. I'm, I'm like Jimmy O'Brien and Jordan Armour have big days. They have to yeah. they have to put massive shifts in as well because, again, similar to Porter, I think they fancy a shot at Larmer, which is a weird thing to say. Um, Jimmy O'Brien's been brilliant, but like he's we're going to need eighty plus minutes out of him because. Mm. Their wingers are just frightening. So yeah, and we're going to need his uh, left boot clearances yeah. as well yeah. with Lowe and Osborne out of the picture as well. That's a bit such a big focus of our game. So so we're going to need all that to be on top. Okay, let's uh, look at the officials now. It's Matthew Carley. It's an all English uh, panel uh, holding the holding the whistle, and um, that's them there on the screen. And the weather is uh, it's interesting now because uh, it's supposed to be very very uh, windy and cloudy and rainy uh, so the position the conditions are not going to be good it's going to be a mild enough 15 degrees but it's that it's that wind that uh, could make it interesting which makes it more likely that it's going to be a carrying game uh, a nutritional uh, uh, carrying game all day so it's going to be more like a sort of a cup rugby kind of atmosphere there so um, we'll see how that shakes out now before we move on to your actual prediction uh, which you may want to put off until later but anyway listen we'll do that <laughs> uh any other matches from this champions yep. cup to catch your eye big bundy's back in the jersey uh Connacht bordeaux um today eight o'clock tonight so um you know that, that's that's brilliant they've, they've they've got their i think it's their best squad they can field uh everybody's back everybody's purring they're ready to rock uh and they're at home they're at home in the sports ground so you know we're talking about weather predictions we know what the weather's going to be bordeaux uh, if they can get on top if if Connick can get on top pretty quick then i think they'll squeeze one out of bordeaux but yeah to see bundy back in the jersey after the the world cup he's had listen that's worth twice the price don't tell them that though cuz they'll start charging it yeah, absolutely. It's a great, uh, great, great two teams. Uh, you see the name Demi and Penno on any team, and you know, yep. you know, you're up against it. But Mac Hansen playing fullback as well. Yep. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be an interesting one. Okay, so um, that can't put it off any longer, man. The bookies have been kind of swaying back and forth on this uh, La Rochelle Leinster match. But uh, where, where, did, where, where are you landing? I think, I think they're, like it's 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 three points. You know what I mean? Either way, um, it's that close. I think I think the crowd in La Rochelle are going to be amazing. I think if we can do our aggressive defense, push them back a wee bit, Big Joe doing a job, uh, I think we can win by three, but we can also lose by three. It's that close. Um, I I was looking forward to it until we started talking. <laughs> uh, and now I, uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to it's it. A, it's a re- reverse therapy session. Yeah, it's good, but it's going to be great. I think it's it's a great it's a great test. Or so early in the competition, previous years we were given out that we we were rolling through people. Now now it's put up or shut up. And you know it'd be great to take the scalp of the the reigning champions first game in. Um, let's go for it. us by three. 
Okay, fair play. No, I mean, a lot's been said about this format, and they, they've been tinkering. And they, they've only got four match days to play with now instead of six. That's the yeah. big stumbling block. It's not all the EP, EPCR's fault for all their faults, but um, it's it's a it's a mad kind of format. But the the thing is, is that if if ever there's a game that Leinster could lose, this would be it. You know what I mean? And um, but uh, you still want a good performance. You still want to, you know, the, the, we have a lot of history, a lot of recent history with these guys. Uh, but if you know, you'd be a fool to say we can't win. That's for sure. And um, it's just it's all about how we how we start and how we how we go for the full eighty minutes. Okay, so look, we're gonna leave it there, man. Um, many thanks to Kigo for joining me. Before we before we finish, uh, what stand up gigs have you got lined up? Oh, we're 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 in the run in now to to Christmas, so it'll be uh, Monday in town. And then uh, there's the Christmas shows popping up. It's all on kegolabs.com. So it'll all be and good. How did the school thing go? Yeah, the kids are still in school. They weren't expelled. I wasn't asked to leave. So we're all good. Again, it's a CCTV issue. If they find <laughs> it, I'm in trouble. So, yeah. You're still, you're still, you're still talking in public, so you're, so it's all good. Absolutely, yeah. They're, they're, I haven't been barred from speaking out loud yet, so we're nearly there. And all Kiko's links, of course, you'll find in the program notes. Okay, so listen, many thanks to y'all for tuning in to our latest preview show. Enjoy the match wherever you are. Be sure to follow us on all the usual social media channels, including Blue Sky. And we will, of course, have a wrap pod for you this week, recording on Monday evening this time. So hopefully, you'll help us by liking, sharing, and subscribing. In the meantime, stay safe, everyone. Slan. <laughs>